Today I'm bringing you a video on the question that I most frequently get asked. Where do you get your ideas from? How do you come up with a story? So there are two secrets that I want to share with you. One is that you say yes to every idea that comes into your head. And two, you seek ideas everywhere. And I'm going to demonstrate it with an English newspaper. Now the really helpful thing around newspaper stories is that they're all built around a crisis. And that's what every story needs, a crisis. So half the work of being a writer has already been done for you the moment you open a newspaper up. Virtual reality headsets to distract women from the pain of labour? Dream on. What great advice for the writer. Now I love this idea of the virtual reality headset to take a woman's mind off giving birth. What a sensational idea. And the joy of this for a story writer is we don't have to find out that birth is going on at the same time until the very final paragraph. So you have a built-in twist. Now you just pick an alternative reality that they're going to in this virtual reality that they're experiencing. But the physical pain and emotions of giving birth are also somehow fitting into that reality so that they seem appropriate to it. Maybe they're in some battle game or skydiving and the parachute doesn't open or whatever it is in the virtual reality. And then we find out those emotions and feelings of pain are actually real, but for a totally different context, it's giving birth. What if your exam results really, really mattered? What if society went completely mad about exam results? So my idea is, um, as you go to collect your exam results, you go into school and get them, there's a whole system of removal vans parked outside the school gates because the fortunes of your family depend on how well you do in the exam results. Um, so I've got a society now where housing isn't bought, it's provided by the state, so we're into a kind of dystopian society here. And if you as the student get really high grades, the removal vans take everything in your house and relocate you to a better accommodation. But if your exam results are poor, your whole family suffers and everything is taken out of your house and you are moved to lower grade accommodation. Uh, so there's a crisis about getting your exam results. And you can have a lot of fun with other things in this world that might depend on academic success. Here's an article about a granny wearing really, really colourful boots. You know, what if I had her jumping out of an aeroplane at 75 doing her first skydive? Um, there's a crisis about whether she wants to jump. Or this is a perfect opportunity to try flash black. So as she's jumping, she's got this great fear of death. And we've got this idea that faced with death, our life flashes before our eyes. And so you could have key moments in the grandma's life um, coming back to her as she free falls down to earth. Underneath it, the article about Greta Thunberg. Well, you've possibly been fascinated by the Greta Thunberg story. Uh, this enormous influence that this teenager could have. And so there are all kinds of crises that could come here. Currently, she's sailing to America on a yacht. Well, loads of crises there. Weather, um, you could have an ironic one where maybe a school of whales threatens to sink her while she's trying to save the planet. Or again, we could project into the future where she becomes elected president of the world age 25 and has to solve the world's problems. There's a crisis. But this idea of a 15-year-old suddenly becoming president of the world really appeals to me as an idea. Because we don't trust our politicians anymore, you know, so youth could be an advantage. No one's corrupt at 15 years old. Nobody's acting only for themselves. They're acting out of passion and desire to make the world a better place, which is what you want, isn't it? Golfers who spend too long taking their shots face a £26,000 fine. <laughs> so I was fascinated by this idea that society could reward or punish you in real time. 
you know, we've got CCTV cameras everywhere, technology, you know, every time you access the internet, somebody's tracking you. In theory, we could have a world really soon where everything you do is tracked. And, you know, what if there were a kind of balance sheet where you were fined for things that you were seen to do that were wrong, but also rewarded for things that were seen to be good and helpful to society. And at the end of the month, you got a bill or a credit from the government, depending on how you'd been tracked doing good deeds or doing things you shouldn't do. And so I could choose either character here. I could choose a character who really needs to build up this credit, but is naturally not successful at being good. That would be quite an amusing story, I think. Or you could have a character who is always being good but is forced into something that they really don't want to do or could it be a character who takes this to the extreme and decides to give away all their worldly possessions but ironically that leads to them getting more points for being good and they accumulate even more wealth so that they then have to give away all of that this article is about katie the capuchin monkey who played Marcel, Ross's monkey, the monkey from Friends. And this monkey could then write their autobiography, giving lots of hilarious details, if you're a fan of Friends, about the actors, or if you're a fan of the LA Lakers, I think it was, giving details about the players. It would just be really funny to write about the perspective of a monkey who nobody knows is highly intelligent like a human, but is able to write their autobiography and give their real insight. And story writing should be fun for you. So here's some true mo romance where Charlotte started work in a shop, met Jack there for the first time working there, had this long conversation, really fell for him, and then a week later for her shift, had spent all week looking forward to meeting him. And uh, when she did, he said, I'm Jack, nice to meet you, as though they'd never met before. He'd completely forgotten her. This idea of building up all your hopes for a week lends itself really well to some story writing. And then the fantastic anticlimax that he doesn't even remember having had a conversation with her or having met her before. You can play for laughs or you can make it really emotional, you know, for this character who thinks she's found someone special and it turns out he isn't. Uh, but you can play it the other way, of course. If you present it in flashback after they're already married, then the reader's got that sort of security that it's going to have a happy ending and you're not just, in a way, making fun of this character for her high hopes. And if you really want to tug at the heartstrings, you could do it when both characters are in their 70s or 80s and perhaps the husband has now got Alzheimer's and is now starting to forget his wife again. So there's some real poignancy to that memory coming up about how he didn't remember her when they first met, and now he doesn't remember her again. But of course, the love between the two can still be obvious and transparent. Or it may be now that she has the Alzheimer's and can't remember him, uh, and so there's the twist. Enjoy your writing. If you want to see some how-to videos, visit my website, Mr. Sales Teaches English. I've got a range of videos on how to write short stories that go through in detail about 20 different ways. And if you just type Mr. Sales Story Writing into YouTube, you'll get loads of videos. If you'd like to read some short stories, you'll find quite a few of them on Amazon.com where I've got a brilliant guide to story writing and an awesome guide to description. So good luck if you fancy it.